Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 52 of my Java video tutorial series. In this part, I'm going to continue making our little video game here, and I'm going to make the spaceship display on the screen, and I'm also going to set up key listeners so that we can eventually move this thing around. So the first thing I need to do is do an import. This is inside of spaceship.java, like you see right there. And I also, by the way, changed this to gameboard.java instead of lesson 50, which didn't make any sense. So back to the code. And everything you see here is available on a link underneath of this video. Now this is going to be pretty much exactly the same as our little asteroid or rock, as I called it. I'm going to go public class spaceship extends and yes eventually I'm gonna do much more advanced graphics type things inside of here and our old friend pops up here yelling at us that we don't have a serial ID for this so I'm just gonna hit add suppress warnings for that and then we're pretty much gonna define things just like I said like the rock so we're gonna go integer and it's gonna have an upper left hand X position and this time I'm gonna set that to 500 which is gonna be based off of the center of our game board and this to 400 and that's just a rough estimate I just want to hash out what I got here and then I need to also determine the direction the ship is going to be moving so I'm just going to keep everything consistent and just have it be X direction except I'm going to set it to zero because I don't want it to start moving as soon as it comes onto the screen and then also with Y direction that's also going to be set for zero and that's just going to be the direction that everything's moving I'm also going to come in here and go and get the width for my game board so board width just like that and I'm also going to come in and get the height that we're going to be using later we're not actually going to use that in this part of the tutorial but I might as well get it because I know I'm going to need it to bounce stuff around on a screen and then I went and drew out what I wanted my ship to look like just like I did with rock like I showed you before and I'm going to store these values in an array and these are just the points that make up a polygon it's just going to be 500 527 500 508 and then 500 again to close it off that's just my polygon points. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Y coordinates of the polygon. So 400, 415, 430, 415, and 400. So that's going to be the starting points for the spaceship whenever it first gets shot onto the screen. And then we have to create a constructor so that new spaceships can be created on our screen. And I'm going to call the polygon class, which is what we extended here. See, extends polygon. So I can just call a polygon and have it do all the work for me. Poly X array poly y array and also the number of points need passed over and that's going to be five so there you go that's real simple that's all i'm going to need for my constructor doesn't get much easier than that and then i'm also going to create a move method and to start this off i'm going to get the upper left hand corner x position and that's just going to be equal to super x points zero just to start off this is going to of course be changing later on but i just want to shoot it on the screen to see what we got here and then play around with everything else later on so i'm just trying to get little tiny bits of everything working on the screen and then i'll worry about going back in and fixing everything afterward and then we're basically going to do the same exact thing in regards to if the ship hits the wall like we did with rock so i might as well just come over here and copy that which is exactly what I'm going to do for now. Might as well copy and paste as much as humanly possible. And there you go. That is all we're going to need to be able to show our little spaceship on the screen. That simple. Now, of course, it's not going to move yet around on the screen like Rock does because it's going to move based off of our keyboard presses. So let's go over into gameboard.java and let's create all that. Now, the very first thing we're going to have to do, because I'm going to be looking for keyboard presses here, is I'm going to have to import a couple new libraries. So I'm going to import java dot event dot key event, and I'm also going to have to come in here and get key listener. All right, now I'm going to be able to monitor if the user clicks on the keyboard anywhere. And then I need to set up that key listener. So I'm just going to scroll on down, and this looks like a good place to set it all up. I'm going to be setting it up inside of the game board constructor that we have here. And I'm going to go add key listener, new key listener. I like that. And then I might as well just be lazy about this and let Java do some of the work for me. Put a semicolon at the end of that. And then whenever this guy throws a little bit of an error, it's going to say add unimplemented methods. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to go in there and create all the methods that I need to be able to monitor keystrokes. And I'm going to pretty much just ignore key typed, key pressed, and focus in on key released. I'm going to simplify this a lot because I don't want to get too complicated. But basically we have to monitor key codes. And I decided that I'm going to rotate the ship using A and D. And I'm going to go forward with W and backward with S. Now the key code for W is 87, and A is 65, and S is 83, and D 
is going to be equal to 68. So those are the key codes that we're going to be looking for whenever we're using this guy. And I'm just going to keep it nice and simple and just go E, which is the event, and get key code. So if the key code is equal to 87, which as you can see, that is W, I'm going to perform one event. And in this situation, I'm going to keep it a little bit simple because I want you to completely understand what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to print out on the screen forward, right like that. Else, if, and I'm going to do another check for another key code just to keep this real simple. And I'm going to go 83 in this situation, which is S. And in those situations in which S is going to be pressed, we're going to print out to the screen backward. Just like that. That was how simple it was to go in there and grab and have certain events trigger whenever a button is pressed on the keyboard. Yes, it's really that simple. And I can just as easily come in here and whenever these things are clicked on instead of printing out something to the screen just to make sure it works because that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to slowly ease into the way big applications are actually created. They're created slowly. They're not created in big giant ball. So then what do I need to do? Well, I have my key listener all set up. So basically what else I'm going to need to do, I'm going to have to come in here and scroll my way on down in here and create my spaceship so that it can be printed out on the screen. And where should I put it at? I think right around here looks just as good of a place as any. And I'm just going to go space ship and I'm going to call it the ship is equal to new spaceship. And there you are. Now I got my spaceship pulled inside of here. And now the only thing that I'm going to need to do is come on down inside of here and move my ship around as well as draw it on the screen. So how hard is that going to be? I'm just going to go the ship dot move right like this. And there you are. That's going to handle any movements that we have. And then to draw it on a screen, I'm just going to copy the same exact little guy we have here on the screen for rock. And instead, I'm going to change this into the ship. And if we file save that, and we have everything else over here all set up properly, which it looks like we do, and execute, you're going to see right here our spaceship is being drawn on the screen. And then if you look over here on the right side of the screen, right like this, and I hit W, forward's going to pop up. And if I hit S, backward pops up. So that is how you draw the spaceship on the screen and also monitor keyboard presses, which in the next tutorial, we're going to make the spaceship move around on the screen and eventually fire at these different rocks that are flying around. And then after that, create a collision in which if the spaceship is hit by one of the rocks, it explodes. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.